launch into space. ABC News live coverage of the launch of the Space Shuttle Columbia continues. From the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, Frank Reynolds. And the first 10-minute uh, uh, hold in this uh, last hour before launch has now been completed. And as you see, see, the countdown clock is once again moving. 19 minutes and 9 seconds. Here is uh, Amy Carter there on the right. She's now a uh, teenager. And Chip Carter, her uh, older brother, on uh, her right. I think they're, uh, they're probably not aware of the fact that they're on camera. and Probably not caring either. But uh, they're watching <laughs> very intently out there uh, the preparations or just just looking at that assemblage of the uh, space uh, shuttle as we said many times before uh, gene it's uh, it's one of those uh, things that television really cannot do justice to simply because uh, to see it here is to feel it when the launch actually takes place oh. and it is a different sensation when you watch it on television you have to watch it within the framework of that box and while it's great and i have nothing but the highest admiration for uh, our people who put these pictures together, still it's really something to be here and see it, well, and feel it. it. Here's the voice of Shuttle, Gene, right. excuse me. Configure pass DFS for horizontal assist uh, display. Okay, stand by, we're still uh, clear on the uh, fall page uh, on the uh, pass, and uh, we haven't quite cut the DFS and outside yet. Okay, this is Shuttle There's Launch Control at T minus 18 uh, minutes uh, and counting. Uh, As we came out of the hold at the T minus 20 minute point, the computer was transitioned to OP 101. At that point, the primary computers on board will be dumped and compared with the onboard computer to verify that it has the proper configuration for launch. The flight crew is co configuring that computer for the comparison test at the present time. And they also have been checking the horizontal situation display. A gimbal check of the main propulsion system is also being performed. A gimbal simply means that the engines are moved from side to side to ensure that they can steer the vehicle properly during the flight. That was the voice of Hugh Harris, and I must say, Gene, uh, with all uh, respect for those who have preceded him, I think he's one of the best uh, at this business of communicating. He speaks English. Well, people have to and, uh, identify and relate to what's yeah. going on. He allows them to do that. Yes, and he does it very well. Astronauts these days do uh, not receive really as much publicity in advance of their flights as in the earlier days of the space program when it was uh, really such a sensation and uh, so unusual and uh, historic. But uh, still, this is a very important event. So let's take a moment now to find out more about the two men who are the crew of uh, Columbia on this third mission. Lynn Scher has this report on the commander, Jack Lausma. Lynn? When you ask Joseph Lausma, who's 18 months old, what his father, Jack, does, he's got a simple explanation. Not a bad description of the man who's been flying in jets, helicopters, and spacecraft for nearly half his 45 years. His career began right out of the University of Michigan. Instead of running a sports shop, he decided to join the Marines. When he noticed in the Marine Corps paper that NASA needed astronauts, Lausma decided to apply. Soon after, he happened to be in a plane when John Glenn was launched into orbit. We were in North Carolina, I remember when he went up the first time. Uh, Jack was just coming back from Puerto Rico, passing over the Cape just about the time the rocket went up. Lausma became a member of NASA's class of 1966. His most notable assignment during the Apollo program? Capcom for Apollo 13, the perilous voyage forced to return to Earth without a moon landing when an oxygen tank exploded. Lausma's first space flight of his own came in 1973 as a member of the second three-man crew to be lifted up to Skylab. He lived in space nearly two months, impressing the public and his peers with unfaltering energy, good humor, and hard work. It was also the first glimpse of Lausma's now legendary appetite. I just I enjoyed eating. I really do. In fact, I would even go out and run a couple miles just so I could eat more. Lausma also took two spacewalks during Skylab and returned to Earth looking as fit as any Marine. Lausma says his training for the shuttle hasn't been confined to NASA. He calls it a team effort with his four children and wife, Gracia, his high school sweetheart. Despite visible reminders of his job at home, she says he doesn't wear his spacesuit home, that the family knows him this way. He's a good husband, a super father, honest, forthright, a dependable. And what you see is what he is. The Lausmas have uh, 
two, uh, three other children, uh, teenagers, two boys and a girl, besides uh, the baby 18-month-old Joseph whom you saw. Now for a brief profile on the pilot of uh, the space shuttle on this third mission, Gordon Fullerton. Here is our science editor, Jules Bergman. Jules? Charles Gordon Fullerton was born 45 years ago in Rochester, New York. He grew up in Portland, Oregon, graduating from Grant High School in 1953. Fullerton went on to earn his bachelor's and master's degrees in mechanical engineering from Caltech. After graduation, he joined the Air Force, where he received his flight training and eventually was assigned to the Manned Orbiting Laboratory Program. That was 1965, and Gordon Fullerton was now on astronaut status. It was at Edwards Air Force Base that he met his future wife, Marie, an Air Force nurse. I had heard about him about six months before he ever came, knew he was eligible and, of course, single and a pilot, and I was a brand new second lieutenant, and I finally met him about six months later. I never have been uh, known as an outgoing, uh, heart of my sleeve type, uh, and uh, I guess just that's the way I came. When the Air Force's manned orbiting laboratory program was canceled, Fullerton became a NASA astronaut in 1969. He served as a member of the support crews for both Apollo 14 and 17. In 1977, Gordon Fullerton flew the first shuttle approach and landing test with the Orbiter Enterprise at Edwards Air Force Base. It's going to be a great personal adventure, the, the greatest I ever expect to have in my life. The dream assignment for any uh, test pilot. And that it is. The Fullertons, uh, by the way, have two children, Molly Marie, who is eight, and Andrew Alexander, who is six. And they'll be very anxiously and eagerly watching their father's exploit today. Well, the countdown clock shows 12 minutes and 26 seconds before liftoff, but that actually is uh, inaccurate or misleading, I should say. Not certainly inaccurate, because there will be, in just a few minutes, another 10-minute planned hold. The clock will be stopped. For 10 minutes, it will be picked up again then with nine minutes to go. Here are various scenes around the Cape. We're shooting once again past uh, pad uh, 34A. And there, off in the distance, you can see the space shuttle, the assemblage, the twin solid uh, rocket boosters, and the big external tank, which is the uh, a different color this time because it has not been painted white. It uh, looks hazy, it looks foggy, and it is really. Here is a shot. Uh, from a, a camera that we have on a boat, the Scandinavian Sea, which uh, is out about 13 miles or so away, and people are enjoying the sun. But also, you see, both of them are uh, looking in the direction of the land, and they'll be able to uh, see the uh, shuttle as it roars out over the Atlantic. So that's uh, going to be quite an interesting exploit. They're going to have a very interesting uh, they view. Should, yes. Our coverage of Space Shuttle Columbia will continue in just a moment.